Is Bigfoot real? Are there other lizard people in this world? Why do I yawn when I see others yawn? So when it comes down to mysteries in the world, Scholar's Cup, there's a lot of things you have to understand before you call your missing cat the biggest mystery of all time. When I search up mystery in Google, it comes up as something that is difficult or impossible to understand. Like Birch leaving WSC. I actually doubt anyone will <laughs> will understand that, that reference. Wow, I, I feel so old now, holy crap. To solve these unknowns, there are various techniques and strategies you can use to solve your mysteries. The first strategy, one which I would not recommend you do, is called guessing. Guessing is a spontaneous conclusion with absolutely no reason at all. Something I do a lot on my tests. Compared to guessing, estimates have some evidence and logical reasoning behind them. Hypotheses are like the next level. They are estimates uh, backed up with actual scientific evidence. While theories are a well-tested explanation for a set of facts and figures, it could be proven wrong if future data proves it wrong. When coming up with a theory, there are various different uh, reasoning strategies you can use to come to a solid conclusion. The first is inductive reasoning, where you generalize existing ideas into a conclusion. The second is deductive reasoning, where you start removing ideas and explanations that don't make sense to come up with a conclusion. For example, if I was looking at the pyramids of Egypt, I can be sure that they were not built by aliens by using deductive reasoning because I don't have any evidence at all that they were. So I can rule out that possibility altogether. The final reasoning approach is called abductive reasoning where you start out with a set of observations and then you go out and find information to back these up. A common approach to figure out a hypothesis, something you were probably taught in school that I don't really have to teach right now, is called the scientific method which is a proven method by creating a hypothesis and then creating an experiment around that to find um, quantitative or qualitative um, information and then coming to a conclusion based on those results. Forensic study is the science of evidence in crime and law. If you were to find clues such as fingerprints or blood on the ground or broken glass, these are hard facts that prove the points of forensic science. Hard facts or forensic science are facts that are 100% true and can be mostly applied to law. Then comes something called known knowns, which are things we know 100%. Known unknowns, which are things we don't know that we know we don't know. And then unknowns unknowns, which are things we don't know that we don't know. Basically things we haven't discovered yet that will be discovered once we start figuring out things that we don't know yet. An example would be dark matter, which used to be an unknown unknown, but is now a known unknown as we have observed the galaxy and find and figured out that it does exist, but we don't really know what it is. If this doesn't make sense, you should probably study epistemology, which is the study of knowledge, uh, rationality, and why we know what we know. Hey, let me ask you something. Do you have no friends? Shout out to you, bro. This simple model called the Johari window can help you figure out things that you don't know about yourself and things that other people know about yourself that you don't know, as well as figure out things that you don't know that you didn't know about yourself and other people also don't know. It's like a gray area. For example, if I steal 15 Cheerios every day at noon because I don't eat my mom's um, sandwiches, then this area would fall under quadrant three which would be things other people don't know about me, but I know. However, if I figured out the other day that I actually somehow do play the, the kazoo, but I never knew before that, this would all fit in quadrant four, as it's things no one knew about me, including myself. So belief is something we just feel in our gut, while knowledge is something that is a cold hard fact. For example, if I believe this is Bigfoot, it, it might be Bigfoot, but I don't actually know, so I have no evidence to prove it. So this would be something I'm feeling in my gut. So intuition is to gather knowledge or call it knowledge without any evidence, facts, or barely even knowing what's going on. Contest time. You can answer any one of these questions. You can win upwards of $1 million 
now. So this question is probably one of the easiest of the bunch, so I wouldn't be surprised if one of you guys read it. Let, 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 me, just, let me just read it out loud for y'all here. Um, if you can solve this one, million dollars to you, bro. Let me read this question out for you. These classical equations can be derived as variations. Two thousand years later. So this question is over fourteen pages long. What is this? So in the year 2000, Clegg created uh, seven questions known as millennial questions and put them on the website and whoever solved them would win one million dollars. These questions are mostly about finding the roots of mathematics and finding what causes relationships and how to figure out prime numbers. So if you can solve these, I'll hail you as a genius and give me 10% of the profits and yeah. That's it. <laughs> so far, only one question has been solved by a whole bunch of Russians in 2003. So, good luck. Question number two, create a robot and make it answer questions in the most human way possible. Basically how this works is that the Loebner Prize is this competition that awards prizes to the people who can create uh, the robot that acts the most as a human. These robots would be considered the most human-like out of all the other ones submitted in the competition. The way it is tested is that the awards person asks the question to both a robot and a human and then they both receive the answer at the same time and then the judge can compare uh, both results. This way of answering was developed by Alan Turing and it's called the Turing test. These questions are more common questions such as how would you feel if you found Bigfoot in the forest like today? The judge then compares the questions side by side to see which one answered more like a human and then rewards the prize to that one. And question number three or should I say task number three now is you have to prove to me that you are a paranormal being. Why is this even a thing like actually? The one million dollar paranormal challenge was an offer made by this guy called James Randi who would basically give a million dollars to whoever could prove themselves paranormal in front of an audience with scientific instruments testing all at the same time. The people would agree on the uh, scientific testing they're doing basically. I hope you can see kind of how, <laughs> how dumb this is because they would actually go out and choose people who thought of themselves as ghosts or demons or what other, whatever other paranormal creatures there are out there. And then they would sit them in a chair in front of tons of people and just like wait until the scientific instrument would say something. Oh my God. <laughs> the challenge started in 1964 offering a thousand dollars to whoever could prove themselves and then scaled up to a million and was terminated in 2015 as absolutely nothing happened in 50 years of doing the challenge so clap to you guys to finish off the video a few additional terms you should know the first one being cognitive dissonance which is when you hold two um, competing beliefs for example if a leader of a country wants peace and then goes to war like bro why dude that right there is uh, cognitive dissonance the next is a uh, wadenut which is basically a classical murder mystery where the murder is really revealed at the end such as a town of Salem John Doe and Jane Doe is a term concealed to people's people whose identity is unknown for example if we know someone killed Jeff because we've seen him dead on the ground in the sofa uh, we would call the murder that we don't know uh, John or Jane Doe based on which gender we believe it is. If you've ever been in the ocean or beside the shore, you might have experienced something called Theta Morgana, which is basically when uh, you look at boats or the horizon and it looks like it's just like floating up in the air. It is caused by the refraction of light on the water, which causes the image to actually flip a bunch of times. 
and is classified as a complex mirage. The term cold case refers to an, an investigation which remains open pending until the discovery of new evidence. The last term I'm going to talk about today is preternatural, which is anything that's just strange, while paranormal is anything that can't be explained by science. Spooky stuff. So that is it for this video. If you found this helpful, please subscribe down below. Give this a like. I'll really appreciate your feedback and help. If you want to connect, please connect down below. Please share this with your delegation, teammates, friends, family, anyone else who you think might um, benefit. And until next time, stay productive. Hello, this is vlog number 78. I've been here in the forest for four hours and a half now. Um, still not found anything. I'm looking for the foot, the big foot. Nothing yet. Hello, I've been here. Forest looking for Bigfoot for now. Around four and a half hours. I think I've seen something. Check, check this out. Oh, 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 yeah! It's coming! It's attacking me! It's attacking me! Oh, shoot! Work! It's attacking me! He's not coming! He's the big foot! Oh, shoot! Oh, shoot! Oh, shoot! Oh, shoot! Oh,